begin the second lecture on 1st John. The title is Spiritual Knowledge. Let's look at the main points. First, believers are redeemed through Christ. Verses 1 through 2. Second, those who know God obey His commands. Verses 3 through 6. Third, love your brother. Verses 7 through 11. Fourth, encourage each believer to walk in the right way. Verses 12 through 14. Fifth, do not love the world. Verses 15 through 17. Sixth, watch out for antichrists. Verses 18 through 23. Seventh, eternal life. Verses 24 through 29. Let's look at the outline of chapter 2. In order to forgive the sins of man, Jesus became the atoning sacrifice. Whoever believes in him must obey God's commands. What are the commands? Here it speaks of three things. Love your brother, do not love the world, and discern lies and watch out for heresies. It emphasizes that we who have been saved by the grace of God must live sanctified lives. The Apostle John stresses that we belong to Christ. He says that many times in chapter 2. Let's briefly discuss this. Chapter 2, verses 4, 5, 6, 9, 1, 14, 15, 17, 19, 24, and 28. It is stressed several times that believers must live in Christ. Even if one may be a believer, he is of the world if he does not abide in Christ. We believers are of the light and are people of love. We must live in God who is life. When we live in God, we are given light and love, which are the essence of God. In life, we can bear the fruit of faith. We will become like Christ. John first emphasizes that we must love our brother. Verses 1 through 11. This is an old command, but at the same time, it is Jesus' command. John chapter 13, verse 34. Whoever hates his brother is in darkness, but whoever loves his brother lives in the light. In chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, we can see a measure of sincerity of believers. It is passively staying far away from sin and actively achieving the life of love. In Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it says that the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Living faith comes from love. Second, we must be believers who conquer the world. In verses 12 through 17, because everything of the world is not from God the Father, 
we believers must not love the world, because the world belongs to darkness. It rejected Christ. Satan has the authority of the world. Even though we live in the world, we must not be assimilated into the world or indulge in the world. We must not follow the world. We most certainly must not love the world. In chapter five, verse four, it says that we must overcome the world with faith. Third, he emphasizes that we must defend our faith. Verses eighteen through twenty-nine. Says that we must hold on to our faith when false prophets deceive us in the end of times. How can we hold on to faith? We must put our hope in the eternal life we received from God, the guidance we receive from the Holy Spirit, to the truth. And in Jesus, who is to come, we can overcome the world with the power of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Read chapter two, verse one. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anybody does sin, We have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. This verse shows the purpose of why John wrote this epistle. He wrote so that believers would not sin. John, who was an old man, encouraged the believers. As if they were his dear children. The reason that God frequently encourages and teaches us through His Word is so that we would not commit sins. Because we live in the world, and our bodies have desires of this world. We must fight the good fight. Hebrews chapter twelve verse four. We must also actively do good. Genesis chapter four verse seven. Believers must always live holy lives. At the time, there were people who claimed. That the flesh could live as it wanted, because the souls were saved. This is not true faith, but false faith. If a believer lives while sinning in the world, he abandons his essence as a believer. However, if we sin due to our weak faith. Or ignorance, we have Jesus who speaks to the Father in our defense. The one who speaks to the Father is our helper and our defender. Jesus Christ becomes our true intercessor, who accomplishes all righteousness. Although we are believers, we still have weaknesses and limits in the world. Jesus defends believers who have sinned. We must not hide the sins we have committed. We will be forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. When we sin. Satan loves to point out our sins and condemns us. 
However, Jesus prays to God for us while saying that he died on the cross for our sins. Romans chapter 8 verse 34 We must not sin, but when we sin as a result of our lack of faith, we must confess it all to Jesus, our true mediator. Verse 2 He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Here, the whole world does not refer to all mankind. It refers to the chosen people among all the people in the world. Jesus came down to the world to take charge of the sins that are committed by the chosen around the world. The atoning sacrifice was a way of fellowship with God in the Old Testament times. When the high priest offered an animal in place of those who sinned as a burnt offering, God received the fragrant offering and fellowship between God and his people was restored. Jesus gave himself as an atoning sacrifice for mankind who was disconnected from God as a result of sin. The blood of Jesus Christ is the atoning sacrifice for all people regardless of one's nation or race. However, if Jesus shed his blood for all the people in the world, the blood of Jesus would be good for nothing. The blood that Jesus shed is the atoning sacrifice only for those who are chosen. It is not right to say that this is unlimited atonement. The Bible clearly shows that there are the chosen and the unchosen, there are wheat and weeds, and the sheep are separated from the goats. Likewise, the precious blood of Jesus is the rock of our faith. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 16 says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The stone never wavers in the midst of difficulties and troubles. It is never shaken and will stand firm in troubles of the world. The stone will never change due to conditions or circumstances. Now let's discuss the four characteristics of the stone. First, Jesus is the rock of salvation in our faith. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else for there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. What is the meaning of the name of Jesus? It means the Savior who will save his people from their sins. Jesus is the only way by which we can be saved from sin and death. There is no other way to salvation. It is impossible to be saved through another religion. We must believe that Jesus alone is the only way, 
the only truth and the only life. Second, Jesus is the rock of faith. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Jesus is the author of our faith and the teacher who leads us. As athletes have coaches and as students have teachers, Jesus is the teacher of our faith. To, li to live a faithful life, we must be led by Christ. What did Jesus do? do? What pleased Jesus? Our characters will gradually become complete. Our spirits grow and we will become more and more like Jesus. When we fix our eyes on Jesus, we gain strength and courage. We do not have to despair when troubles or difficulties come our way. On the other hand, if we looked to things other than Jesus, we will be disappointed and discouraged. Peter walked on the water when he fixed his eyes on Jesus. However, he began to sink when he saw the wind and waves. We must open our spiritual eyes and fix our eyes on Jesus only. Then joy, hope, courage, and power will overflow in us. We will see the works of the power of the Lord. Before the suffering of the cross, Jesus looked upon the joy of resurrection, ascension, and the throne of God. Jesus fulfilled his mission to the end, and God exalted him to the highest place. Therefore, Jesus is the rock of our faith. Third, Jesus is the rock of victory of our faith. In Revelation chapter 6 verse 2, Jesus sits on a white horse and is given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. The white color generally belongs to God. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18, Matthew chapter 17 verses 1 through 2. Riding on a horse refers to war. The gospel movement of Jesus Christ is winning over and over again. Jesus will have the final victory. Even though Satan crucified Jesus, the Lord rose in three days and triumphed. The gospel has the power of God and it will win any time and everywhere. The gospel has the power of life. Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Jesus had victory over the authority of Satan and he is winning through the gospel movement today. No matter how strong the power of darkness may be, it will never conquer the light of the gospel. As the light grows brighter, darkness will gradually disappear. As the works of gospel grow, the power of Satan recedes. Fourth, Jesus is the rock of the hope of our faith. 
Colossians chapter three verse one. Jesus gave life to our souls that were dead in sin. Jesus achieved redemption on the cross, and He prays for us at the right hand of God. Jesus helps us. Romans chapter eight verse thirty four. When Stephen was martyred, Jesus helped him at the right hand of God. While we live in this world, we must always look upon Christ, who is our hope. Then there will be no worries, there will be no fear, there will be living hope. When we finally leave this world, all that we hoped in will be achieved. Although David was king, he says in Psalm chapter thirty-nine, verse seven, that his hope is in the Lord. <clears throat> Abraham also looked forward to the better home, the place where God is. Hebrews chapter eleven verse ten. The apostle Paul also said that our citizenship is in heaven. Philippians chapter three verse twenty. Therefore, if we hold on to Jesus, our rock, there will be nothing on earth that we will fear. There will be no worries. We must hold on to Jesus, who is our salvation, faith, victory, and our hope, and we must not be shaken. Verse three. We know that we have come to know Him if we obey His commands. If we truly know God and believe in Him. We can obey His commands. Proof that we know God is obedience to His commands. Jesus also said this: "Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father." And I too will love him and show myself to him. John chapter fourteen verse twenty one. When we faithfully keep the Lord's commands, we can say we know him. This is the measure of our love towards the Lord. No matter how many times we may say we love the Lord, if we turn from His commands, we do not do as we say. We are liars, and there is no truth in us. Therefore, if we truly know God, we will obey God's word. Verse four. The man who says I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. If anyone does not do what God commands while saying I know God, he does not truly know God. If he truly knows God, he will keep God's commands. And God will give him rewards and blessings. Those who do not keep the commands will be judged and punished. Those who know worldly kings and their authority will fear the king and obey his commands. What happens if someone goes against a king's orders? He may die. 
then how could one who knows the authority of God not keep his commands? Our God is fair. God makes us reap what we sow. Galatians chapter 6 verses 7 through 8 says that God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. If he sows to please his sinful nature, he will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit he will reap eternal life. If we truly love God and we sow seeds of obedience, then we will reap what we sow. God told us that he would show love to a thousand generations. Exodus chapter 20 verse 6 To those who love God and keep his commandments, he will show love to a thousand generations. We must not sow what will rot in the world. We must not want to reap eternal life while sowing to please our sinful natures. Instead, we must work for the bread of eternal life. Knowing God and Jesus is related to eternal life. If we do not know God, we cannot obey Him. If we do not obey Him, we cannot receive blessings. Knowing the Lord is our strength. Here, to know does not indicate physical knowledge, but means that our spirits understand through faith. If we truly know Jesus, then we can love him. If we love the Lord, we can keep his commands. God gives blessings and rewards to those who keep his commands. Verse 5 But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. If anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is because God's word is love, it is life, and it is power. Why is God's word love? God gave us the gospel of his word because he loved us. Jesus gave up all the authority of heaven. Jesus, the Word, became flesh and came down to this world. We are saved by the Word and we received forgiveness of sins and will enjoy eternal life. God gave us His Word to us who were saved because he loves us. When we keep his word, God gives us blessings as proof of his love for us. In chapter 5 verse 3, it says that his commands are not burdensome. God's word is life. As we eat daily bread for our bodies, we must eat God's word to give life to our souls. We believers must always keep God's word close, diligently read the Bible, learn it, meditate on it, and obey 
so that the life of our souls may grow. God's word is power. The gospel is God's power that gives salvation to all who believe. The power appears wherever the gospel goes. There are changes where the gospel is, whether it be homes, neighborhoods, or nations. The hopeless become hopeful. Those who have lived in darkness come out to the light of the word. The gospel entered Korea in 1885. Korea was once a barren land, but it became a developed nation after the gospel entered. We have nothing to boast of. Although we can't do things well, we gain power through the gospel. In the same way, if we, if the love of God works in man, spiritual communication will be made complete in Christ. If man does not have the love of God, his life will be barren, desolate, and there will be no joy in serving God. However, if man is filled with God's love, he has satisfaction, joy, and hope. He will be thankful and will be filled with the Holy Spirit. Verse 6 Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Those who live in Jesus cannot help but love others. This is because those who live in Jesus follow the way of Jesus and keep his commands. Just as grape vines bear fruit, when the branches remain on them, we will bear fruit of love when we remain in Jesus. We are never alone. The Apostle Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. Paul lived by the life of Christ. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 Jesus lives in us and we live with him. All our actions must acknowledge God, love Jesus, and obey the words of Jesus. Jesus is our Lord. The corruption in us must die daily. We must think like Jesus, speak like Jesus, and act like Jesus. Jesus became the example of love for us. We must live a life of love that was shown in the life of Jesus. Jesus spoke to his disciples at the Holy Communion. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. John chapter 13, verse 34. When we live by corruption and greed of the flesh, there is no love in us. But when we acknowledge Jesus and follow his examples, we can be people of love. Those who do not have love can change to overflow with love. When we act with love, the places we go can become places of joy. The places can become heaven. Verse 7 
Dear friends, I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Love is the center and the core of all commands. The old command refers to the commands of the holy. Of the Old Testament, the doctrine of the Old Testament commands is love. Deuteronomy chapter six verse five, Leviticus chapter nineteen verse eighteen. Love is the doctrine of all laws and prophets. We all heard. The command of love in the Old Testament, also the new command that Jesus gave us is love. An expert in the law asked Jesus, "Which is the greatest commandment in the law?" Jesus taught him the command, "Love your God with all you have." And love your neighbor as yourself. Love is the greatest commandment. And now these three remain: faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. First Corinthians chapter thirteen is about love. Without love, there is no use of speaking in the tongues of men and of angels. If I have the gift of prophecy, if I can fathom all mysteries, if I have all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but if I have not love. I am nothing. Although we can give aid to the needy, or dedicate ourselves to the utmost, if we have not love, there is no good thing. Let not debt remain outstanding, except the continuing debt to love one another. Romans chapter thirteen verse eight. All things that are done without love are meaningless. Christianity is the religion of love. God gave His beloved one and only Son to us. Jesus died on the cross because He loved us. Where can we find devotional, self-giving, and unconditional love like this in this world? We received infinite love that cannot be found anywhere in the world. Therefore, we must love. Verse eight. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you, because the darkness is passing, and the true light is already shining. It says that a new command to love one another was given. John chapter thirteen verse thirty four. A new command I give you: love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Jesus said this when he was on earth. Both the old and new commands are about love. Then why one command old and the other new? That is because Jesus completed love. Jesus displayed complete love. By dying on the cross, 
Jesus clothes us with love. The period of darkness passed, and Christ came and shone His light on us. Ephesians chapter five verse fourteen. Wake up, O sleeper! Rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Christ shines the true light in the New Testament times, and He invites all who are in darkness to come to the light. The Lord leads believers who have fallen asleep in faith to the light. What characteristics does light have? It brightens up. Dark places. Christ came to the dark world and lit it up. The Lord came to wandering and dark spirits, and gave them light. Jesus came as the light of life. Whoever believes in Jesus is freed from his sins. He overcomes fear of death. The life of our spirits will never die. We gained eternal life. Jesus is the light of the truth. Those who come to Christ are freed from ignorance, sins, and lies. With this, we will conclude the second lecture on First John. Thank you.